Joe Turner is a liaison and recruitment manager uh, at the University College London with more than 20 years experience in the field of international education. Joe has for the last 10 years been UCL's representative for students applying from Canada. She visited Canada numerous times and has counseled and advised many students considering applying to the UK generally and to UCL specifically. Welcome to the forum, uh, Joe, and please feel free to begin. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And hello, everyone. Good afternoon from uh, London, England. A lovely sunny day here in London, which you may be surprised to hear. Um, so I've put together a presentation for you, which I'm going to share my screen now. And um, there we are. I hope that you will see that. Um, so the idea of this session, uh, it's a workshop about a session about um, applying to competitive universities in the United Kingdom. Uh, I hope that you're all in the right place and expecting this one. I'm going to talk for the next half an hour or so, 30 minutes or so, uh, going through my slides, hopefully giving you some um, useful tips uh, and hints for making your applications, uh, if you're thinking of, of doing so. And then um, I'm going to um, come back into the virtual room, stop sharing my presentation and take some questions in the Q&A bit. So if you think of questions as I'm going along, feel free to type them in the chat. Um, I won't be dealing with them uh, at the time that you that you write them, but we'll we'll get to those in the end and just as many as as we can. So I hope that you will have some questions for me. Um, so please, as I say, type as as we go. So the United Kingdom, uh, just as a little reminder, if you need it, is we're talking here about England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. So that little dot on the map, we are a small place, but um, I think uh, as as you go along, you'll realise that we have a lot to offer, even though we are a small island. Uh, and not least, we have a number of fantastic uh, world leading universities in the United Kingdom. Um, so uh, more than 160 universities in total um, and some really outstanding ones uh, amongst them. So when we look at the world university rankings, which is maybe something that you've been doing while you're making your choices, um, you'll see that the, uh, the United Kingdom has four universities in the world's top 10, uh, including, I'm very pleased to say, UCL, which is the institution that I have the pleasure of representing. 16 UK universities in the top 100 list and 32 if we look at the longer list of 250 universities. So we may be a small place, but we certainly um, are, are right up there uh, in terms of education. Um, and uh, I hope that that's something that is uh, attractive to you. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about what we think we can offer in, in the UK. So uh, the number one thing, I think, is the reputation of our institutions. Um, some of them have been educating students for a very long time, hundreds and hundreds of years. Two of the most famous there, Oxford and Cambridge, the oldest universities uh, in, in England, have been, yes, offering a, a, a top class in uh, education for, yes, a, a very long time indeed. Uh, UCL, the institution I represent, 200 years of teaching uh, students. So um, yes, our reputation uh, built over a, a number of years of, over time is for the quality both of our research that comes out of, use, uh, uh, out of the United Kingdom. So lots of universities are uh, publishing some really amazing world leading research and also the, edu the, the, the teaching side of it. So the education that we offer, particularly to undergraduate students, that's what you, you will be. Um, so that teaching and research is something that we're famous and noted for. Uh, and we have a worldwide reputation and we are well recognized for the quality of what we provide here in the UK. So if you were to choose us, then you will be assured of quality. And that's important when you're making uh, choices because you have so many choices um, available to you. Uh, also in the UK, I think because of those things that I've talked about, we attract many thousands of international students to study um, in, in the United Kingdom. So thousands joined us, join us every year. Um, and they find when they come that it is a very international environment, a very multicultural environment, one in which, you know, perhaps they hadn't realized that they will meet so many people from so many parts of the world. Uh, the UK really does attract people from all over. 
and uh, it, it, it's one of the great things I think about um, the education that we offer. The environment there is, is outward looking, it's very cosmopolitan and diverse um, and, and, and that means that yeah, you benefit from lots of different ideas. We also, although we're a small place, uh, we also have a lot of choice. Um, so even just in the United Kingdom, uh, we have uh, thousands and thousands of programs available for you to choose from. Um, so just by looking at the, the UCAS, which is the application portal, the UCAS application site, you will find thousands of, of, of courses. And no matter what you want to study, you will find a range of options. And that's very, that's very attractive too. Uh, we're also known in the UK for um, producing graduates who are going to be globally mobile, who are going to go all over the world and work, and whose degrees are then going to be recognised um, and uh, they will find then good jobs as a result of it. So particularly then there we're talking about the top tier of the UK universities, which is essentially what this workshop is, is focusing on. So really the most competitive um, universities to get into, the, the, the top tier. Um, the graduates from that group of universities are really, really, very highly sought after. So if you have a degree from, from one of our institutions, uh, the likelihood is that you will go far with it. Um, so that's, that's very reassuring to know as a potential applicant, I think. And the, stream, the, the streamlined application process that we operate in the UK is, again, also quite attractive, I think. You make one application, you can apply for five different places. It makes it quite straightforward from, from your point of view. Uh, and the last thing to say about the UK and what we have to offer, I think, is, uh, or the main thing I wanted to highlight, is that when you finish your programme, it doesn't mean now that you have to leave the United Kingdom, uh, go away and um, immediately having finished your studies. There is now the possibility of staying on for up to two years on a slightly different visa. So you'll be joining us on a student visa that will cover the duration of your undergraduate program. You will then, you can then go on to a graduate route visa, which gives you another up to two years where you can work, you can look for work, um, and you can get some really valuable experience um, on the back of the, the, the degree that you've studied in the UK. So that's a really, again, a, a great benefit, I think. In terms of what we're looking for, so the top universities, what, what, what are the sorts of students that we're looking for? What are the traits, et cetera? Well, we definitely, um, the system means that we, uh, we want students who know what they want to study. So if in the application, you will be applying for a particular program. So already you have to like filter all the options that you have available to you and think, oh, I know that I want to physics, or I know that I want to study economics, and then you need to be finding the universities that, that fit what you're looking for. So definitely you need to know what you want to study. Um, and you also need to be able to work independently. Um, so the top universities in the UK are not institutions which will hand you on a plate every week or every day uh, exactly what you're expected to do that day or that week in terms of the academic work. Um, you probably will find that you have fewer hours than you imagined uh, in your timetable, in your schedule, certainly compared to high school. Um, you know, it could be as few as eight or 10 hours a week, depending on what you're going to study. Um, and this could be spread across the whole week. So parts of your day, there, will, there won't be any classes, uh, depending, as I say, what, what you study. So you need to understand that when there aren't classes on, that is not a holiday, that's not vacation. Um, that's time when you're expected to study yourself, to perhaps do some extra reading, some reading, to work on assignments, to work in groups on projects, um, whatever the activity is. So it's, it, yes, you're doing things outside of the classroom, which are actually absolutely relevant to, to the program and, and getting on with that. So working independently, driving your own study, self-directing, learning, your learning, all of those are important traits. Uh, and for that, you need to be self-motivated. So you need to be the type of person that can, yes, organize your time, manage your time and motivate yourself to say, yes, Today, I'm going to spend the morning in the library because I want to read this, or I want to find out about this, I want to do research on that, etc. Um, 
we're also looking for people who want to develop their ideas further, who are not looking to be told exactly what to think about a particular topic or theme, um, but actually who will listen, who will listen to all sides of the arguments, uh, who will read various things and get different points of view, and then develop their own ideas about something. So become really what we, what we would call a critical thinker, and no matter what your subject or area is. Um, you must have a strong interest in your subject. Um, that will come through very clearly in your application. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, managing time I've talked about. Be prepared to speak up. Yes, so um, although some of the activities that you'll be undertaking at university in the UK will be passive, so in a, in a lecture environment, a bit like this one, um, I'm doing all the talking, you're listening very attentively, um, uh, and you will, you will, in a lecture, you would then take notes and uh, uh, then, then use those um, afterwards. Um, other aspects or other forms of uh, types of classes that we have are not a lecture-based um, activity, but they could be a small group, um, what we call a tutorial or a seminar. And in those, uh, in those classes, you're expected to speak up to say what you think about something, to ask questions, to find out more, um, and yet yeah, not to be passive. So being being prepared to do that is, is important. And yeah, as I said, there's a variety of different teaching styles and you need to be able to act, adapt to all of them. When we're selecting uh, applications, uh, uh, going through applications and selecting applicants, there are a few things that we use um, to do that. Um, entry requirements, uh, have you, are you meeting our entry requirements? Uh, we read your personal statement, uh, we read the reference from the school which they will write, um, and depending on what you're applying to and which institutions you're applying to, we may also look at additional tests or materials and we may interview you. So all of those can form the basis of the selection that we make when we're looking at applicants. Uh, starting with entry requirements, this is this is super important, and I think this makes us a little bit different in the UK to some other um, countries. When you're when you're thinking, if you're thinking of applying to other countries as well, um, each institution in the UK will publish their entry requirements, not just at top level. This is what you need to get into UCL or or Manchester or Edinburgh, but but much more nuanced than that. This is what you need to get into the economics program at UCL. This is what you need to get into the history program at UCL. So each program will have its own set of requirements. And for you as students, that's your first thing that you should be checking. What are the entry requirements of the program I'm interested in, number one? And number two, am I going to meet those requirements? So we publish those, they're transparent, you can, you can find them out, it's easy, easy to do that. Um, but then how you react to that and what you do with that information is important. So um, when we look at applications, the most competitive institutions will, the first thing they will look at is, have you met or are you predicted to meet the entry requirements? And if you aren't, then for the most competitive, popular institutions and programs, you will very quickly be on the no unsuccessful pile. No matter how brilliant a personal statement you write, no matter how wonderful a reference your school writes you, if you don't meet the entry requirements, that's very quickly the end of the line, the end of the road. So it's really important to keep that in mind and really only be applying for the programs which you will have the, the requirements for, where you will meet them. Um, bear in mind that the more selective, the more competitive institutions, the world leading institutions are going to probably have higher entry requirements. Um, so, so you need to you need to pitch where you're applying to based on what you're likely to achieve. Um, bear in mind also, it's not just often talking about um, so in, in the grade five Ontario system. Uh, a number of different grade 12 subjects at a certain percentage, which is typically what we would state. Um, but it may also say particular subjects that you need to be having. Um, so make sure that you do check all of those requirements and don't overlook anything. And like I say, be realistic when you're applying. Um, if you're a student that's sitting on sort of 88 percent um, and you've got a couple of grade 12 courses, you've already got you know an 88 and an 87 in, 
um, and then you're predicted to get you know further 88s for example um, I would suggest to you that it's not a good idea to apply for programs which require 90 percent uh, in grade 12 subjects because there's a mismatch there and um, yes if if uh, if you apply for those in the most competitive uh, institutions you will find that you'll very quickly um, make an unsuccessful application so being realistic is important to you things that you should be aiming to show us as part of your application this is this is going to be really in your personal statement which is the, the crux of the most important aspect of your application from your point of view um, we we're looking for you know a really thorough um, interest in and knowledge of the, the, the subject that you said you want to study uh, an understanding of what the degree that you are applying for involves so um, if you said you want to study law we would expect you to understand that if you study law you have to read a lot you have to digest a lot of information in a quick time you need to be able to summarize things uh, and, and 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 work you know from a lot of material so if you're not someone that's that that's that's used to to reading a lot um, then that, yeah, maybe that shows you haven't really got an understanding of what it's going to be like to be a, a, a student of law. So, so some understanding of what's involved, what the activities are going to be, and what the skills are necessary uh, that, that you need to have are going to be, that's important too. Transferable skills, yes, absolutely very important. We look, we look for those. However you've, you've got those, it's the skills that we're looking for. So um, things which are useful and critical thinking, I've mentioned that, how highly valued that is, but also things like time management, um, uh, independent learning, learning, you know, part, being part of a group, group work, uh, being a leader, all of those are what we would call transferable skills, soft skills, uh, not necessarily related to a, to a particular subject, but still if you have an understanding of the skills that you have and how you developed them, that can be really useful to us. Um, we want, we want people who are going to get involved, so we aim to um, understand from your application that you are someone who is going to make the most of the opportunities given to you. Um, and we want to know what you're going to bring. Um, so it's not all about what you're going to take from UCL or from Edinburgh or from Manchester or Oxford, but also what are you going to bring us? So why should we choose you over another student is essentially what we're, what, what we're looking to understand. So some tips about the personal statement, um, uh, which I hope will be useful. So remember, this is going to this one statement that you will write will cover all five choices. Um, and so you need to make sure that it resonates equally with each of the five uh, institutions that you're applying to. Um, so if you're applying to slightly different subjects or programs at one institution to another, then the advice always is to write to majority. So if the thing that everything has each program has in common is economics then write about economics if everything has if what everything has in common is is politics then write about politics so whatever the, the whatever it is write about that um it's your opportunity to show why you're applying for that program and what you've done to make yourself a better candidate um so that's that's an important thing um and we we are we're really looking to see um how you've developed your your um, your skills, your knowledge, your understanding, um, because really that that's the best demonstration that there can be that you're motivated and interested in a subject is that you you know you take those extra steps to find out more because you're interested in it, not because you have to learn it in the classroom in the school classroom. I think that's a, there's a useful um, uh, difference there between you know what you're learning in school what's part of the curriculum and therefore you have no choice in and what you choose to pursue and find out more about outside of the classroom. We'll talk a little bit about more about that in a moment. Um, the personal statement should be very specific about the subject you want to study. So that's where the specifics come in, but it should absolutely be generic about place. So what we don't want to see in personal statements are lines like this one. I, you know, ever since I was five, I've wanted to, you know, I've wanted to study at Oxford or um, London is the place where I see myself uh, living and studying. Uh, you may think that that's useful to put that information in, but think about the other four choices that you that you've made on your um, on your application. They may not be based in London. 
uh, and you know only Oxford is going to be looking at Oxford other people are going to be reading that I might be reading it in, in Scotland thinking gosh well this person wants to go to Oxford so let them go to Oxford and <laughs> um, so you should be very generic about the place not mention the place at all it's the program that's where you've got to be specific that's just a tip for you. Sometimes people fall, yeah, fall, fall um, over in, in that particular regard. Um, it should be informative and well written um, and uh, including having checked for mistakes, grammar and spelling, um, but also just, you know, sense, sense check it and um, so that it flows nicely. You don't have much space. Um, you need to use the space, the, really a page, uh, one page of writing, 4,000 characters. You need to use it it wisely. Some more tips for you about the statement in itself. So yeah, you need to be addressing the why this program. Really, when you're writing the statement, keep in your mind that this is the question that you need to be aiming to answer. Why do I want to study physics or economics or chemistry or insert the subject that you want to study? Why is it? And, and you should spend about 80% of your whole um, statement writing addressing that question um so yeah what's your motivation what have you done um what do you know about it what skills do you have that are relevant to the study of that subject etc etc and really only about 20 percent um should then be about other things beyond that academic motivation and there you can bring in things like some of your other skills um that, that you have whether those are transferable skills or whether they're things that you've done, you know, outside the classroom, which are relevant to the study, what we call super curriculars. So um, something might spark your interest in the class that you then go away and, you know, watch a TED talk or um, do an online course or um, learn something, read some more articles, watch something, whatever it may be, just to follow up on something uh, that, that's really interests you. So those are what we call super curriculars. And for the most competitive institutions, very, very, very important that we see evidence of those. Um, I definitely would suggest that you want to show your statement to other people um, to get feedback and to just to get from different people as well. So yes, of course, from your counsellors and teachers, but also perhaps from family and friend, friends, because those are the people who know you best. And um, what sometimes happens is that you're so busy trying to make this statement the best it could possibly be, that actually suddenly you become quite removed from it. And if somebody reads it who knows you well, they might say, well, this reads very well, but actually it doesn't sound at all like you. Um, at at which point, if that's the sort of uh, feedback that you're getting, you might want to go back to your personal statement and just tweak it a little bit so that some of you comes out. Because after all, the clues in the title, it is a personal statement. So we do want to learn something about you, have a sense of you, what's, um, what's your reaction to a subject or what's your take on something. So yeah, we definitely want to be hearing your voice in it. There are also some things, so some tips, things that, to do, which I've just said. There are also some things not to do, if you can possibly avoid them. I think you'll find it helpful. Um, certainly the first one, it will be much easier if you choose five programmes which are very similar in nature. So if you choose five programmes which are about economics, include economics, economics on its own or with another subject, then that will make writing the statement much easier and it can be equally as compelling and resonate equally with each of the universities that reads it. So that's important. But if you're writing half about programmes in music and half about programmes in physics, you'll find that your, your personal statement will very quickly become very unfocused and will perhaps leave people with the impression this is a student that doesn't know what they want to study. So um, by choosing things which are similar, you will be helping yourself a lot. Avoid cliches. That's, uh, that's a, a general rule. Um, they're just empty words. I would call them empty words. They don't tell us anything about you. So try and avoid them. Same with quotations. Now, you may think that's quite a clever thing to quote someone else who said exactly what you know you think about something or or what what something that made you made you think or stop or whatever it may be 
we don't see it that way. We see that this is a personal statement. We want to read your words. Why are you wasting some of your precious words giving us somebody else's words? So um, avoid quotations, I would say. And also enjoy, avoid making jokes. Um, something that you think is very funny um, that, you know, that people would enjoy and uh, put you in uh, uh, a good light may, may backfire completely. So I would stay away from jokes if I were you. Um, Um, you know, just a list of books that you've read or articles that you've read or um, things that you've watched, whatever it may be. Um, that doesn't tell us anything. And it uses up these valuable words that you, of which you only have a limited number. So um, choose a couple of good examples and tell us about it. So uh, not use the list format. Plagiarism, there's some quite sophisticated software in the UCAS um, application system, which will find out that, that you will be found out if you are using someone else's work. So um, please don't do it. Uh, it should be your own work. Uh, and also, this is again about sounding like you. Avoid using language that you know you would never usually use um, so that it sounds like someone completely different to you. So um, yeah, that's just another tip of, of, of what not to do. Uh, people write good personal statements, many people write good personal statements. The most competitive institutions and programs are looking for more than a good statement. They're looking for a great one. Um, you know, how do you turn you know, a very good statement into excellent or outstanding? So here's some things to think about, particularly with these competitive uh, institutions in mind. Um, so don't rely just on what the school curriculum is. That's important. So go, go beyond that. The super curriculars that I talked about, that shows a level of interest and motivation, which um, is important for us to see. Um, extra reading, what have you done over and above the classroom? Um, so you can, that helps demonstrate, you know, a real interest and motivation. And that will, by, by telling us about those, that will show us that you're motivated and we will believe you much more than if you just say, I'm incredibly enthusiastic about, and then just tell us. So it's, 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 it's proving by what you've done and through your words that, you, that how, how you've connected with something rather than just telling us or describing what it is that you've done. So there's, there's, there's a, a useful distinction there between so that description and actually sort of analyzing, reflecting um, on what you've done. And yeah, a couple of good examples mean a lot more to us than, than you know, trying to just say list everything or, or, or tell us everything. It can just come out in a great big like, oh, this person's got so much to say, but actually too much to say. They haven't thought about it and um, they haven't reflected on it and, uh, and we're missing something in, in this statement. So less is more, sometimes less is more. Couple of good examples that you can then build on a little bit. That will, that will speak to us and, and make a strong impression. So yeah, and that analyzing and reflection is really, really important. And other ways that you can stand out from the crowd, most of the, this I've said um, already, but it's worth reiterating because this I think is the really important things to take away for, for, for you today. So it's that demonstrating your interest. So not just telling us something, but demonstrating it. And you can do that by talking about how you react to something that's happened or something that you've read or um, some uh, experiment you've seen or wh whatever it is, whatever your field, it's, it's your reaction to it, your take on it um, and what, how that cemented your interest in the subject. Um, examples of these relevant and transferable skills. So, um, so yes, it's, it's great to know that um, you know, you're, uh, you're a good leader or that you, you can work in a group. But um, if you're going to be studying engineering, for example, it's really important that we know that you can work in a group because when you're an engineer, that's what you're doing all the time. It's project based work. You're working alongside other people who may not be from the same discipline as you, but you're doing you're working together to solve a problem. That's a lot of what engineering is. So it's thinking about the relevant skills for the program that you're interested in and it's talking about those. We don't need to know about the irre irrelevant ones, it's the relevant ones. The reflection piece is really important. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave you to think about that. Uh, and just yeah, remember to prove it uh, and show it in what you write rather than just describe it. 
uh, or, 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 or tell us this is what you did, full stop. We want to know what you got from it. What was your reflection on it? Uh, what did you learn from that? And how has that made you more committed to study what you say you want to study? And that sense of you-ness, that you, that personal bit of the personal statement, really, really important. Um, depending on where you're applying, as I mentioned, there may be other elements of the application. Um, if you're going to be study, um, applying for medicine or law, you may have to write uh, an admissions test for, for those subjects. Um, <coughs> excuse me. That needs to be done uh, in advance of your application or at the same time. So make sure that you're on top of, you're aware of what needs doing um, for what programmes at which institutions. So not all medical programmes require a, a medical admissions test. Not all law programmes uh, require the law's admissions test, but some do. And if you're applying to one that does, then you need to be taking it. If you're applying for um, one of the more practical um, programs, I'm thinking there about things like uh, fine arts and architecture, portfolio will likely be a really important part of your application and um, a part which will be um, mostly, mostly will, will, will have a lot of um, emphasis on that in, in the selection process. So uh, in, important that you know about that, what type of portfolio, when when's it required, et cetera. If you're applying for another type of practical program, so a performance type program, so music or drama, there may be an audition process. You may have to um, submit samples of your work. Uh, again, that's that's another element that, that's added into those other the other things that everyone provides. That may be an additional thing that you have to do for that. Um, or other tests. So some universities for some programs use things like a th thinking skill assessment or language competence tests. Um, so there, again, it will depend on a particular program at a particular institution. So do your research and know what's what's required. And some institutions, of course, will interview you. Uh, increasingly, um, not so many UK universities interview students now. We get many, many applications and certainly at UCL, there's only three or four programmes that we interview for over a list of more than 400. So for most of our programmes, we don't interview. For Oxford and Cambridge, on the other hand, you don't, you, you won't, we won't get an offer at Oxford or Cambridge without going through an interview. So they interview large numbers of, of, of students, um, and that's part of their process, an important part. So if you're going to go to, if you're going to be applying for one of those universities, then you need to understand and practice uh, the interview process. And with these other admissions tests, again, a tip for you is practice, practice, practice them. Um, you can go online, you can find practice papers and, and practice them in advance. So just to sum up what I've said and quite a lot of information I've given you, I, I know that. So take your time over your statement. There's lots of things to consider. Uh, you've got these 4,000 characters, use them wisely. And um, this is not something that you can write from one day to the next and then submit it the following day. This will take time. Um, you should you should leave time both for you to look at it again, but also for others to look at it and feed back to you. Um, you should also remember that although I've given you some tips today, things to do and not to do, and there is no magic bullet um, for a personal statement. There is no one correct way that it, that uh, that you should write your statement. It's personal. Just just remember that, and hopefully that takes a little bit of the pressure off. You're thinking you don't have to do it in a particular way. Um, there's no single one way. When I look at students who make successful applications and read the personal statements, they read very differently, typically. So there's not just one way to write a personal statement. Um, practice your tests, I've talked about that. Taking advice from others, again, I reiterate that, including your counsellors. Many of them are very um, experienced and they will uh, they will have uh, experience of helping students make successful applications. So really important that you listen to them. Um, they're a, val a valuable resource, which is right there in front of you um, in your school. So uh, I encourage you to uh, take advantage of that. And finally, um, be true to yourself. Um, you know, we, we want a sense of you. You're the person that we want to hear about. We want to know whether you are a good fit for our institution, uh, not about the person that you want to portray to us. It, 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 it's you. So um, be true to yourself and that will come across um, in your statement. So thanks so much for listening. That's the end of my presentation. I'm going to um, 
jump now back into the virtual room and be ready to take any questions that you uh, have either been typing already or that you think of now. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen and come back to you. Hello, Joe. Hi, hi. That was a great uh, presentation. Students have gone ahead and posted questions in the Q&A tab. Are you able to click on that tab in the chat session? Yes, let me find it. Q&A. Oh, yes, I can find some questions there. Great. Yes. And I'll let you just run through those as many as you can anyway. Perfect. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for engaging uh, like that. That's fantastic. So um, I'm, I'm going to go through them in order. Um, and uh, starting with, does studying in London give me any advantage of any advantage over other places in the UK. I think the I think what I get from that is if I choose to be a student in London, will that give me advantages? Um, maybe I would say this because remember, I'm from a, a London institution. I would say yes. Um, London is the capital city. It's a large, vibrant city of nine million people. Uh, all roads lead to London. It is a legal capital, cultural capital, media hub. Um, fashion, fashion uh, capital, um, financial hub. So lots and lots and lots of things going on in London. No matter what you want to get into, you'll find networking, finding a job, careers-wise, as well as the experience that you have of being in a large city might might be an advantage to you. However, that said, London is not for everyone. Not everyone wants a large city environment. So my advice to you is to think about the environment where you think you will be happy. If you think you need a smaller place, then you know don't apply for London. Um, but but if you think you know you're a city person at heart, then by the same token, don't apply for a campus university in a more rural setting, because maybe you won't feel comfortable there. So think about what's important to you. But yes, I think that there are some advantages. So hopefully that helps. Uh, next question, accommodation to a story uh, for people who struggle with medical problems. Um, okay, so that's quite, quite specific question there um, about medical problems. So I think I think in, in general, universities are very um, sympathetic about any sort of issue that you have, either before you join or once you are studying there, we all have you know, very good um, support services for students. Um, many of them are specific also for international students, so an extra layer of support that we offer. Um, and I encourage you, you know, no, no matter what the situation is, to reach out to the institution and um, they, they will help you uh, get the right support that you need. Um, Again, someone's talking about uh, support services. Yes, so so no matter what the issue is, no matter whether you need sort of more support from on, on the learning side, whether you have medical accommodations which need to be taken into account. Yeah, all those support services. It, it's it's a very a very broad range of support that that we offer. So hopefully that reassures you. Um, Safety precautions, yeah, again, most, well, all the universities in the UK will be mindful of that and um, give advice to students about um, staying safe on the campus, uh, if it's a campus or, or around the city. Um, so yeah, each, it's hard to speak generally, um, because there are 160 different universities um, and you know, at least 20 which fall into the, you know, the super competitive set that I've been talking about today. Um, but, but yes, rest assured that there are there are lots of support services available. Um, going on, how would the knowledge that I collect be applicable abroad? So again, someone's asking specifically. That's uh, directed at UCL, the institution. But I think in general, um, UK you know, UK degrees are highly valued, as I said during my presentation. Um, it's understood and recognised that the UK degree is a sign of quality and that uh, when you have a bachelor's degree in a certain subject, that you, you know that subject very well. So you will deep dive into a subject in the UK from day one. That makes it very different to a degree in uh, the United States, for example, where you have you know a general year, uh, and in fact, often don't start really learning your major until the end of the second year. Um, that, that makes it very different. In the UK, you're going to be doing you know right from day one, oh, chemistry and only chemistry. 
Um, so you will you will have a knowledge of your subject, as well as lots of other skills that we will help you develop uh, in the UK, including critical thinking and other transferable skills which employers highly value. So I think that yeah, being in the um, in the UK is 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 going to help you and be recognised. The degree that you have will be recognised for sure. Um, going through more questions. Again, people are asking what makes UCL different from others. Um, I'm not sure that's appropriate for me to answer here. The, the, the idea of this workshop is to talk you know, generally about uh, all the great institutions which are in, in the UK. Hopefully from listening to me um, and knowing that I'm from UCL, that might make you want to go away and do a little bit more research about uh, this institution in, in particular. I'd be delighted if you went to visit our website and then reached out to us if you have any questions um, uh, about it. Um, but uh, yeah, I, mean, I think you know, there are there are uh, a number of very very good institutions in the UK, of which UCL is is one. Um, so someone again is asking about scholarships at this institution in particular. Let's let's widen that out. All universities will have certain scholarships available to international students, either given on the basis of financial need or on merit. Uh, you would have to look at the particular institution that you're applying to or interested in to find out more about those opportunities. Um, particularly says there about sports scholarship. I would say that's something that the, U the UK does less than somewhere like the US. So our, our scholarships tend to be more yeah, merit based or financial based rather than on the basis of sports. Um, but yeah, there may be a couple of um, sports focused uh, institutions which um, do have opportunities like that. Um, going through, are interviews necessary? No, so though for UCL, not. We've only got three programmes that will interview people. But yes, for Oxford or for Cambridge and for some other institutions, yes. So that's where you've got to do your research and find out whether interviewing is part of the process. Um, how easy would you say it is for international students to integrate themselves into the institution? Well, again, I talked there a little bit about the support services, the fact that we will all have orientation programs on arrival for international students as a way of um, helping you make that transition between a, being a high school student, but also being a high school student in another country and coming to the UK uh, as, uh, and everything will be new and different. So we definitely will help you with that integrate. process uh, as well as then um, emptying itself so so we track record of, of, of uh, welcoming international students to the UK so I think it's something that we we have been doing for a very long time and we do it very well um, so we're all very used to, to, to doing that so hopefully that's um, uh, of some comfort to you um, can we supply mix mix set of requirements applying to UK universities um, so that, that's, that's very specific um, to in, institutions. So the one I talked about entry requirements, each institution will have entry requirements published. You need to check those. If it's not clear what you have, whether that meets those requirements, then I would suggest you reach out to the relevant uh, program at, at the relevant institution and ask them. Um, so we try to be transparent and say what we can, but we can't, but we can't uh, go through all the nuances sometimes. So sometimes you, you just got to ask your question um, of that institution. Um, so, so again, someone asking about UCL in particular, don't really want to go into what makes us unique. Um, I talked about what makes the UK unique and hopefully attractive to you. Um, if you want to find out more about UCL, then yeah please do research us on, on our website. Uh, is there on-site accommodation, accommodation for students? Yes, all universities will have some accommodation available, some, some dorms, um, either on the campus or around the campus, depending on uh, which institution you're at. Um, so yes, they will all provide housing of some sort, typically only for the first year um uh, that we will prioritize or guarantee housing for first year students not all universities can um provide accommodation for the whole time i'm guessing i'm out of time yes <laughs> is that is that oh yeah <laughs> i tried so, to speak as quickly as i can <laughs> that was wonderful can you hear me okay i can 
Okay, great. Well, uh, first, let me just thank you for providing such a great window into the admission process at UK uh, and for giving students, or our students, such great tips. Um, there's certainly a lot of excellent opportunities in UK for UK in the UK for our students to be excited about. Thank you again for giving us your time. Um, and would you like to add any closing thoughts before I close this session? Please feel free. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for, very much for having me, for inviting me. Thank you to the audience for being here and for engaging. I can see by the questions that um, people were obviously uh, engaging. Uh, whatever it is you decide to do, I hope you keep the UK in your sights. Um, I'm quite passionate about um, what a great opportunity it is to come to the United Kingdom. I know you have a lot of choices. I hope you keep us on your radar. Uh, but whatever it is that you end up doing, wherever you end up applying, uh, I send you my best wishes for the application process and, and beyond. Uh, and yeah, whatever you go on to do, I'm sure you will do.